This is an Aperture Mini Tube. We see these things absolutely everywhere, from Mr. Beast videos all the way to high-end, big-budget video production. These come in at around 9 watts of output power. Now, this is the brand new C100 from Zhiyun coming in at, you guessed it, 100 watts of output power. So in this video, we're going to find out what this light is actually like to use and if we really need 100 watts in a one foot tube light. Before we get into what this light can actually do, would you like to receive one for free? I wanted to give back and say thanks to the people who subscribe and watch my videos. So I asked in my community tab which you would like me to give away. Tube light one, so I'm going to give one of these things away to someone who watches my videos. So make sure to stay around till the end of this video to find out exactly how to enter for a chance to win one for absolutely nothing. When I found out about the C100, my initial thought was, do we actually even need 100 watts in a tube light? But once receiving it and putting it through some tests, there is so much to unpack here. So let's not waste any more time and dive into what this thing actually can do. So the C100 is a one foot tube light. Well, it is a little bit over one foot. This aperture light here is actually one foot. And as you can see, it's just a little bit taller. So it's around 1.1 feet in length. It is an RGBWW LED light. For anyone that does not know what that means, it means inside the light just here, there is a pattern of LEDs. They are laid out in red, green, blue. And then the important part is warm white and cool white. The good news here is this normally means that we have a bigger range of colors and they are normally more accurate. But we'll be touching more on this throughout the video. The first impressions that I had of this tube light was just its design and build quality. It comes in at around 1.3 kilograms and for reference, that is the same weight as a 13 inch MacBook Air. So you're talking around the weight of a thin and light laptop. So this thing is definitely heavier than most one foot tube lights, but that is to be expected. That extra weight comes from the six internal batteries this thing has and also six internal fans to keep it cool. All those batteries though do get us incredibly good run times. What you would think would be a negative with being 100 watt output, you'd expect it to have really bad battery life. They've actually turned into a positive. And from my testing, this thing beats most other one foot tube lights, which is quite strange. So those six 4,500 milliamp hour batteries that are inside this light give us a runtime of just under one hour at 100%, two hours at 50%. And the most impressive one for me is five to six hours at 20%. Now, as I just mentioned, this thing beats most other lower output tube lights. Charging is also another A+. They have found and done such an easy solution to such a common problem we see on lots of tech that requires high power in today's market. The situation that you will normally find would be that USB-C is super convenient and everybody wants that, but finding an 100 watt input or shipping an 100 watt brick in the box can get pretty expensive. So you then put a DC input on there, which can continuously power the light, but also it's not very convenient as you have to carry around this big bulky cable. So what they have done here is just giving you both. On the body, you have a USB-C with PD, allowing you to input big, powerful USB-C inputs, and also a DC cable that is shipped in certain packages of this light that allows you to continue to power this thing without any worries. I'm personally a massive fan of the design of this thing. Not only is it switching up from the normal copper and paste design of all the other tube lights that just look the same, I think it also looks industrial or even more professional. So when you're pulling this thing out on set or on projects, I do think it would impress people more than the basic old standard tube light everyone has seen before. And also the build quality materials, they're all metal or just really high quality. I can easily say this is built better than anything in its price range and probably the best built tube light I have used. Granted, I've not used like infinity bars from Aperture, but they are in such a different price point. It's unfair to compare this to them. 
Usability is something that tube lights have struggled with for many years in my opinion. They've definitely got better in recent times but just the nature and shape of the fixture just means they're really awkward and normally require you to use a Bluetooth app to make them easier to use. But Zion have done really well here with this tube light and it's probably again continues the easiest tube light I've ever used. It comes with two buttons and these two little knobs here. What are the real secret to making this thing really easy? You have one button for power, one button for modes, and then these two dials on the side allow you to adjust stuff like Kelvin temperature, hue, intensity, all the stuff that you would expect. And they also double as buttons so you can click them in to select something and click it again to unselect something. Overall though, it's just a really easy to use light. The first time you use it, you will just feel like you already understand it. And I have said nothing but good things about Zayun's Bluetooth app, which allows you to control these new C100 lights and also mix them in lighting setups with their older stuff, which is all super easy to do, just as you'd expect. This brings me on to my first negative though, and this is that inside the Bluetooth app, there is no control for the effects modes. This has been around for a while and comes from Zayun's older lights, but I feel like in these tube lights, it could be more of an issue as if you've rigged this thing up onto a truss or in a ceiling or just anywhere awkward, a moving car, anything like that, and you suddenly do want to change one of those effects, then you're gonna have to get access to it to do that. But this is an easy fix. I think Zion could update the Bluetooth app and worst case scenario, update the firmware inside these lights and surely that problem would go away. So let's move on to those mounting options. There are two different packages when it comes to purchasing one of these C100 lights. There is the standard deal and also the combo deal. So inside the standard deal, you get barn doors, diffusion, a carry bag, and a charging cable. And for around an extra $100 in that combo, you get all the stuff just mentioned, plus a clamping system, that DC continuous power cable, and a grid to help you control the light. What I will say here is this is the first light I have had from Zayun that comes in a carry bag and it is great quality, right in line with all the other manufacturers as carry bags and probably belongs in a light more expensive than this one. So that's always good to see. It feels pretty unfair to bash on the quality of the accessories on such an affordable light, but the grid and the diffusion are not great but it's just good to see that they designed them and provided us with an option for those. The barn doors are made of plastic, but I think the design of them is pretty well done. They like clamp on and off and they're pretty sturdy and don't require any kind of screwing or locking. So that happens really fast. And from my testing, you can flag off a little bit of light off walls. Obviously this is quite a soft source, so you're not gonna get any hard lines or anything like that. The clamp though is fantastic. It is a solid metal construction and it is the shape of the cylinder tube on the back of the light. And you use this kind of force mechanism to lock it in place. It is incredibly sturdy and allows you to center mount the light, what just gives you so much more freedom with the light being balanced and creating a little bit of space from the object you are clamping to. For me, this clamp would make that $100 upgrade worth it, especially if I was someone who's going to be trying to use this light as a hair light. It has all the normal effects you'd expect in a light made for creating videos, but it does have one extra effect that you don't seem to find anywhere else. And that is a music mode, not specifically a music mode, but this thing has a built-in microphone. So when you go to the music mode and press select, all you have to do is play a song from a phone or a speaker or anything really, and this thing will start flashing to the music. Now to say how easy this is to set up compared to competitors where you have to use an app and import songs and files, it works pretty damn good. Zion have also got some really creative ideas for the C100 light. They are releasing this frame with barn doors on it that holds four lights in like a square or rectangle uh, format. And then they say that you would have 400 watts of output directly placing this light against like an aperture nova or a sky panel but both of those lights have less output the bluetooth app and inside these 
fixtures, they have some sort of mesh technology, what would allow you to merge all four fixtures inside the frame into one light, allowing you to easily control them. I don't know how you get around the fact that you'd need four power cables or to charge four different batteries though. That seems like a little bit of burden. But again, I like Zion are trying different things and giving us different options. They also are selling this little attachment adapter that goes on right on the end of the light and this thing will allow you to stick multiple together giving you like two foot three foot or four foot lights so what is this light like to use out in the real world when creating videos well you find out pretty fast that it is not designed to be used where other one foot tube lights are normally used this thing is kind of more in line with using say a four foot tube light or even a c or b light just with its output and how much it weighs it really changes where it can be used and what it can be used for. A good example of this is I set up my 4x4 frame, chucked on a half white diffusion and shot this thing through it as though it was a COB light and used it as a key light and it works just fine. The output of this thing really changes its use case just because it is shaped like a one foot tube light. You've kind of got to do the shift in your mind to understand that it can be used in different situations. I find myself using it most as like a backlight or a hair light, an environment light, lighting up spaces. I never found myself going to 100% intensity on it, but I also don't use 100% intensity on any of my lights, so that might just be the way I work. Its strong point would not be like using it above the lens as an eye light, like you see so many people use kind of smaller tube lights. If you try mounting it to the camera, it would just make your camera too front ever. And even if you've got a helper or a first AC or someone to hold it above the lens, it would start to ache their arm a lot faster than some of the lighter options. It feels to me like it's somewhere right in the middle of like an aperture Nova or sky panel and a tube light. Because of its output and its built-in diffusion, which is really good and doesn't allow you to see any individual pixels, whenever you're messing with the chasers and stuff like that, it is just a really well-balanced diffusion. And I find that kind of not hard light, not soft light because of the size of it, really useful for doing hair lights and backlights and even lighting spaces, as I just mentioned. My main gripe with this light was when it comes to using low intensity RGB. When you're using those warm and cold emitters, it is totally fine. So if you're on the CCT range at 3200 Kelvin or 4000 or 5600 Kelvin, you can go all the way down to its minimum brightness just fine. But when you're in those RGB modes and you are below 10%, as you flick from 9% to 8%, there is quite a drastic shift in color. As you can see, it is flicking between those different RGB LEDs. Now, it is possible to get where you need to be. Say you was after a cyan color, then at 7% it might be too blue, at 6% it may be too green, but at 5% it may be just what you want. But it just doesn't give you that kind of fine control that you'd expect from a filmmaking light. Building a great lighting kit is all about options as you just don't know what your next project or next location is going to throw at you and what you are going to need. And I find the C100 ticks so many boxes and fills in so many gaps. This thing has exceptional build quality and comes in at a great price point. And if you want to be in for a chance to win one for totally free, then you have to do two things. Go down to the link to my Instagram in the description of this video and give me a follow. Secondly, the pin post you will see of this C100 light, go to that, make sure to like it and comment on it. And I will pick someone who has liked it, is following me and also comment on it at random to ship one of these two for absolutely zero. So go and do that now and stop wasting time.